Hi, welcome to the Shelly Studio. That little drawing you saw there is my um, instructions for this project. I saw an accordion fold I wanted to give a, tr a try, so this is what we are attempting. So, I'm using watercolor paper, and I've this is the largest pad I think I have in my stash. I think it was 11 by 14. And so I'm taking it and it's, there's two different pieces. I think this is the first piece and it is three and a half inches wide. Um, and I am creasing it every four inches. Yes, er, sorry, I'm measuring and I'm probably whacking the microphone. So every four inches I am measuring it and it didn't go very far so I added some double sided tape and I'm going to stick the next piece on so I can keep going. So the um, three and a half inch piece that I'm doing now is what I would consider the inside and then the outside one will be four and three quarters inches, but they will both be the same. Um, the folds are all four inches, if that makes sense. So I just stuck those together and I'm just gonna continue four inches from the last crease I made. So it's a little bit difficult, you probably can't see it because it's white and you know there's no marks. But I'm just going every four inches and I'm scoring the paper so that it'll have a nice straight fold. And I probably said the reason I'm going so slowly, even though this is sped up, is because I want to make sure it's straight. And I'm not very good at perfection. So here I'm like, okay, that's not going to add up to four inches now, so I've got to figure out where we want this to be. So I decide to just fold it up and see where we're at. It's just the easiest way to do it. So I'm folding it along all of those creases. And you can see, you know, you're getting a part of one. So what I decide to do is make those sides equal. So they are going to be equal on both sides and they will attach to the other piece. So it'll be okay. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I am doing it at the two inch mark. I figured halfway would be about right. And then a quarter of an inch for the little section that will attach to the other piece. It'll make sense. I promise it'll make sense. So there's my inside section. I'm just creasing it really good or trying to. And we're going to set that aside, I believe, and do the next section. And then next section is still the length of the paper. And it is four and three quarters inch. And then it was folded at four inches as well. So now I'm, I'm measuring this so that I can determine how big of an opening I need to have in my larger panels because they're going to insert inside. So my inside again was three and a half but I want there to be a little bit because I'm going to cut a groove into it to hold them into place so I'm going to make the opening three inches even. That will give us a half an inch to play with. 
So that'll give us a quarter of an inch on either side. So I'm just um, so I have three quarters of an inch on both sides and then three quarters of an inch from the fold on one side of the fold and then I'm going to cut it off on the other side of the fold and gosh <laughs> um, if I'm not confusing you that's good you're pretty smart because I think I would be confused at this point but you can see I've got the pencil marks in there I've left one solid flap and then the two mountain folds are the ones that are being cut hopefully that helps mountain is the ones that go up when you're laying the paper down, go up in the air, and the valley folds are the ones that go down. And they go up on either side, so we have two side flaps going up and then two mountain folds, and those are what we're cutting. Clear as mud, I'm sure, but it was really fun. Once I got it done, like, you can hear me over here, I'm like, opening and shutting this thing is so much fun. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so and I'm just using my X-Acto knife that needs a blade change and going through the two mountain folds. And I'm just trying to be careful. I don't want to go past the line. I don't want extra cuts in the paper. I think I actually did okay. I mean, there's a few rough patches, I guess. Sorry. The distracting noise. So hopefully by seeing what I've cut out there, what I said makes sense, I hope. And that was a half half an inch on both sides and at the one fold end, the valley fold end. Trying to get those to meet without going too far. There we go. So there you can see it's the mountain folds. Apparently that end needed a lot more help than the other side. Okay, so we have our zigzag, and now we're going to determine where we should put the little grooves so that our other one will fit in there. And I just went for the center, so that should be two inches from either end. Did I end up doing it two inches from either end? Let me grab out my ruler. Too dang close. Yeah, the goal was two inches. Whether or not it was successful, I'm not sure. So I'm marking that on top and bottom on each of those four panels. So both sides of the window on both of those sections.
And yeah, again, going slowly, trying to make sure I get it as straight and accurate as possible. Okay, so this part, I'm just going to take out a quarter of an inch long segment. I'm just trying to make it thick enough, so I'm lightening up the uh, pencil marks so that they won't be distracting later. And I'm just going to do a quarter of an inch long and just a little bit of a gap, just enough for that paper to go through smoothly without any problems. It's probably a little more than a sixteenth of an inch. It's not quite an eighth of an inch. And so this is how it's going to work. So I'm going to tuck those in each of those sections going the opposite with the zigzag. See how it just fits into those little grooves. And then the half pages will connect like that. See? There is my zigzag accordion fold. Alright, so now that I figured that out, we want to add some fun colored paper. Okay, so I went ahead, so you weren't watching me, I picked two complementary contrasting complementary colors on the color wheel and um, grabbed out some of my jelly print papers and pre-cut them to size. So I just made them a little bit smaller all around to leave maybe an eighth of an inch border. They're not perfect, but uh, um, yeah, so that's what I did just to give it a white border around every panel. And I left all this in because the I think when you take like a jelly print that doesn't look like much and you cut it down to just a section. I think they're so pretty. <laughs> maybe it's just me, maybe I'm a little biased. <laughs> but I love how the jelly prints look um, once you cut them down into these small little um, sections. Well, and as you can see, I've sped this section up a little bit faster so that we can get through it since it's pretty self-explanatory. Alright, so that is done on both sides. I'm just pushing it down again. And now we're going to work on the larger section. So I have some orange and gold colored papers. And I have cut them to go in those little strip sections. Um, the borders on those aren't quite as good as just the flat panels. They were a little harder to get right. But it'll look okay.
Like this spot right here, I didn't leave enough space to get a white gap in between. But it won't really be noticeable. Like, it'll look purposeful. Unless you're looking closely. Alright, so now we're getting that back in place. Just squishing it in and out. I want to make sure they're lined up just right before I adhere those to the outside panel. So I'm just adding the double-sided tape. So I'm adding it to both sides just to be ready. That had a little bit, like it, you know, it's a jelly print. It had a little loose piece of paper, so I just glued it down. <laughs> It'll mostly, mostly be hidden by my little panel. Watching this, I think I could have gotten that a little bit straighter, but it looks pretty good. I mean, you can't tell. There's just a little bit crookedness. But yeah, I hope, uh, isn't that fun? That's so much fun. <laughs> I do that quite a few times, but I don't make you watch. <laughs> All right, so now we want something on the outside, right? So I used up three different sheets of gel printed papers and I didn't have anything else quite the same. So this is another jelly print that I thought would go okay. Like it's blue and it's got a little bit of the same blue that's inside. So this is what's going on the outside. And I, I just used the back of one of my paper pads and cut it down. Let's give you the dimensions of this. So it is actually four and a quarter by five. So it's just, what, is, what does that make it? It's really only a quarter inch longer and I think a half an inch let's see yeah and about a half an inch yeah so a quarter of an inch wider and a half an inch taller than the original book and I do have and I don't know what I was thinking. I, if I if I did it again, I'd make it a I'd make it more than four and a quarter. I'd probably would would go for four and a half because one side is all the way up to the edge, and the other has a little bit of a lip. So you could do it where it's all up to the edge, or if you want to have that lip around the quarter of an inch lip around. Um, yeah around the whole book. So I I didn't want to mess with a liquid. I don't want my papers to warp, so I just went ahead and used the Yoohoo. It seems to be working just fine. I'm pre-creasing all of my edges to make it easier when I get down to gluing it. And the corners I did trim off a little bit, just barely longer than the depth of the chipboard I'm using. And I just rub that and then I push down on either side just to kind of tuck the end in and that helps cover the corners so you don't have any of the chipboard showing on the corners. So see here I just push that in. I just work my way around. 
A lot of people do opposite side and opposite side, and that helps um, if you're afraid of stretching or warping your paper, or if you do it across from each other. Um, that'll keep it from warping if you are afraid that that's going to happen. I wasn't too worried about that happening, so I just went for it. So there's one. And I was trying to decide what I want to put on the front. Um, but in the end, I don't really do much. Okay, so for this part, I am using a liquid glue. I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue. And I'm just going to use my finger and make sure it goes all the way to the edges. Because I don't want any of the edges pulling up. And then I just smooth out the stuff in the middle because I don't want any bumps. It's watercolor paper. I think it's, what, 140 pound paper. It's not going to show any of that, but I did that just in case. So I've got that on, I don't know if you can tell, I have it up against one edge on the long side and then centered everywhere else. And we're going to do the same thing on this. Make sure that's centered and lined up with that's another reason I used a liquid glue it has a minute you can wiggle it around a little bit and I'm just gonna push it all down make sure it's good and touching everywhere and then set it aside and now it is good to go gotta separate that make sure the glue is not gluing to everything. Now I decided I wasn't sure. I think I'm just checking everything out here. Sorry it's kind of slightly off screen. Making sure everything's stuck down. Um, but I was like how am I going to know which which is the front? So I decide. Well, I was thinking about putting it back there but then you can't spread it all the way open. I'm like what can I do? And so I decide to just do a circle punch and then do half on the front and half on the back and have it on the front side, front end, the wider end, you know, when you open it, the better side, um, so that I would know which end to open. Not that it matters, but that's what I decided. <laughs> I'm just going to glue that on with the glue stick. And oh my gosh, I I am in love with my little accordion book. I mean, it was a little bit of work, but actually, you know, without having instructions and just seeing a zigzag book, I think it turned out pretty good. I'll have some close-ups at the end so you can see the papers or maybe some of the details. Anyways, if you're still here, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, share it with your friends, pin it on Pinterest, do all the things. <laughs> you know what I mean. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. Have an awesome day.